Hey everyone, welcome to this quick hit where we're gonna be building this main menu you see right here in front of you in Unity with UI Toolkit. And for those of you who don't know, UI Toolkit is officially the recommended way for making runtime UI in Unity. And guess what? This is the perfect tutorial to get you started. Let's not waste any more time and let's get this going. Okay guys, here's a blank Unity project and let's start by adding an empty game object named main menu. Next we create a panel settings in create UI toolkit panel settings asset and this will also automatically create a UI toolkit folder for you. I'm just going to move our panel settings inside that folder then change the scale mode to scale with the screen size and I like setting my reference resolution to a standard 1920 by 1080. Next up, go to Create UI Toolkit and select UI Document. We can name this main menu and this is like our main working canvas for our UI elements. So if you double click this document, Unity will open the UI Builder window. Now inside here, we got the hierarchy and we can set our main menu.uxml canvas size to be 1920 by 1080 as well. Let's drop in our first visual elements and I'll name it just game BG. So I'm going to swap out our background image here by going to the background, clicking image. And as long as you have any texture or image loaded into your project, you can then choose one here. So I already have this image loaded in, which is what I'll be using. Next up, drag another visual element as a child of the game BG and name it main menu container. I'm gonna to go to size and set the width and height to 800 each, but you'll notice the height didn't actually change here. So that's because we need to open up the flex property and set grow to zero. Let's give this a nice background color. I'll set it to black with a bit of transparency. Then we can give our element a border. So I'll choose maybe like an off white color, give the border like a thickness of five and a radius of 20 and cool. So obviously this menu is not centered. In order to do that, just click on the game BG container, go to align and set the justify contents and align items to center. Now let's add a header label, drag in a new label element, and we'll just customize the font here a bit. So just choosing like a larger bold white font here than at the top of the inspector, we can also change the text to main menu. Now I don't really like how close the top of the label is to the top of the container. So if we go to the container, we can add in something called padding. I'm gonna add in 20 pixels of padding and you can see that now our label has kind of moved away from the top edge of it. Now this is an optional part, but we can also add in just like a little bit of a spacer element here below our text. So I'm just gonna be setting this to a height of two pixels and that growth property to zero as well. And we can change this background color to white. And maybe now one more thing here is I'll just add in five pixels of margin so that the top is a little bit further below our main menu label. Okay, it's time to add in some buttons. So first we're gonna add in a button container, visual element here, then we can add three button elements to it. I'm naming them settings button, achievements button, and play button. Just make sure that you take note of these names because we will actually need these later. So here's one of the great things about UI Toolkit. We want these buttons to all look really similar, so it's the perfect time to actually create something called a style sheet. Click the plus icon in the top left and create new. I'll name mine main menu style. Now we can create a selector, which I'll name main menu button. Make sure you drag this style sheet onto each of your buttons. And then now we can click and highlight the main menu button selector in the top left and change its style. And what's awesome about this is it actually is gonna change all three of our buttons at the same time. So I'll make these buttons have a width of 450 and their height 120. Let's give each of them a margin of 20 and let's also style the text to be a bit bold and a bit bigger. Use our off-white color here and then additionally, we can change the border to be white and I'll give it a width of maybe like five and a radius of 20 here as well. One more little quick tip is you can actually add a text shadow to make this text stand out a little bit more. So I'm just gonna give it a small two pixel black shadow. Okay, so obviously the buttons aren't centered. We can fix that by selecting our button container and changing the align items and justify contents properties again. And of course, we also wanna change the label text for each of these buttons. So let me just give them a proper name here. 
All right, so now we want to individually customize our buttons. So I'm going to make a new selector here named settings button. The great thing about these style sheets is you can apply more than one at a time. So just drag the settings button selector onto your settings button, and you should now have both style sheets applied. Let's click our settings button selector now and customize its color. I'm choosing this red hex color that I found earlier, and I'm about to show you what is probably the coolest part of this tutorial. So copy and paste your settings button selector and rename it to have a colon hover at the end. This is telling UI Toolkit we're gonna add in an additional style only when the element is being hovered by our mouse. So I will then choose a darker red color for our hover element, and we can go into preview mode in the top right and just test it out live. So you can see that the settings button is now changing color when my mouse is over it, and we can actually change the color on the fly and even fine tune this a little bit. All right, so I'm actually, I'm just gonna go through this exact same process again for the two other buttons. I'm gonna speed this up. So, you know, just make the style sheets, apply them and choose the colors and you should be good to go. You should end up with something like this, and if we preview it, you can see all the buttons are now changing on hover to a slightly darker color. Now it's time to add the main menu to our scene. So click the main menu object and add a UI document component. Drag in your panel settings and the main menu UXML file as your source asset, and you should see it in your game view. The very last thing we gotta do here is hook up our main menu to register our clicks and do things like scene navigation. So create a folder named scripts and I'll create a script named main menu. Open that on up and first create a serialized field of type UI document. Then create three private buttons for your settings, achievements, and play buttons. In our awake method, we get a reference to our root visual element. Then we set our buttons equal to root.q of type button. Then in the parentheses, make sure that you type the same name of the button in UI Builder. For me, it's just settings button, achievements button, and play button, and note that it is case sensitive. Now I'll create a method for whatever we wanna do with each click of the button. So I'm naming these methods show settings menu, show achievements menu, and play game. For the first two, I'll just have them print out a message on the console, but for play game, let me actually show you how to switch scenes. First, make sure we hook these buttons click events to these methods. To do that, we type button.clickable.clicked plus equals show settings menu, and we're just gonna repeat that for all the other buttons. For our play game function, we wanna switch scenes, so we type scene manager.loadScene, and in parentheses, write game scene where game scene will be the name of our new scene back in the unity editor click on the main menu game object and add our main menu script to it click on the target and assign our ui document to the main menu ui document then finally let's create a new scene and name it game scene so double click that to open it on up and you can see that it's just an empty default scene but before we can switch into the scene we actually have to add it in our build settings so go up to File, Build Settings, and then Add Open Scenes. Now we can switch back to our main menu scene and we're done. So here is the final demo, you guys. We have a nice menu where we hover over our buttons. They respond to the hover event and change styles, giving us a nice visual feedback. Additionally, if we click Settings or Achievements, it prints out the correct statement in the console. And if we click Play, we load right into our new game scene. If that tutorial helped you, click that like button right now, subscribe to the channel, and remember I release all of my assets and projects completely for free, so please consider joining these lovely people who have subscribed to my Patreon and YouTube accounts. Did anything confuse you? Could I have done anything better? Let's hear those thoughts in the comments, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace!